Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Phil Arno. Kim Piazza is off today. If you've paid attention lately to the news, you've seen Donald Trump just about everywhere lately. He's the cross to the politically correct vampires. He's making so much noise that it seems the other 16 candidates to the Republican nomination for president seems to be stuffed in a corner where nobody can see or hear them, relatively speaking. How long can this last? And what if he does get the Republican nomination? How would he do against Hillary Clinton? And what kind of a president would he make if he ever got to the, the White House? With me today is Vic Martucci. He's a nationally recognized political consultant with a firm of Massiello, Martucci, and Calabrese. Welcome, Vic. Thanks, Phil. Good to we'll be here. We'll uh, be talking about uh, uh, both Hillary and uh, Donald Trump today. Okay. Uh, what a, a phenomenon uh, it's turned out to be with, uh, with Trump uh, yes. lately. This is uh, something that I don't think anybody would have predicted about three months ago. Well, um, for a number of reasons. One is uh, Donald Trump has flirted with the idea of running for public office several times before. Uh, both president and governor of New York and, and never made it to the starting line. Um, and it remains to be seen uh, whether or not he'll actually put his name on the ballot in any of these primary states. Um, you know, Donald Trump is a creature uh, or a product of the uh, uh, reality TV culture that seems to have enveloped our country these days. Um, and, uh, you know, the more controversial he is, the more exposure he gets, and the more exposure he gets, uh, the better it is for the Trump brand. And so there's a cynical part of me that uh, wonders whether or not he'll actually get to the starting line in this case as well. Um, but the fact that he's at 22, 23 percent in the polls uh, for re the Republican primary suggests that um, he has to be taken a lot more seriously this time around. Well, in, in a, in a uh a field that's got 16 or 17 candidates, uh, 22, 25, one poll even has them at 32 <clears> percent. <throat> um, that means there's upwards of 70 percent that are not in his uh, corner. Right. What does that mean as the other candidates start to drop off and some of the candidates uh, gain support uh, if somebody comes into uh, popularity, maybe a, a, a Ben Carson or Jeb Bush, or somebody comes to, to the top uh, and it becomes more of a one-on-one, -on -one. Right. what then? Yeah, I, I think what you're seeing right now is I think you're, you're seeing uh, Donald Trump um, probably at his ceiling. Um, he's attracting the angry Republican vote. Um, <clears throat> the people that are anti-establishment, uh, anti-politician uh, and he has the highest name recognition um, and the most resources of any of the um, outsider candidates so to speak in the field and so he's he's attracting that vote um, he's actually in my opinion hurting Ted Cruz who um, uh, was you know that was a target audience for him that the Tea Party vote uh, so is it sustainable I don't think so. I think what you're going to see is as, as the uh, B-level candidates drop out uh, and the field begin in, begins to narrow as you get closer to the first primaries, um, you're going to see a much more competitive race. And there's a lot going on behind the scenes right now with some of the other candidates um, in terms of grassroots structure, grassroots organization, fundraising. Um, they're positioning themselves for when the horse race really begins. Uh, and that kind of stuff happens under the radar. But you have to admit that as far as the norm is concerned, mm -hmm. <clears throat> he has tapped into something that just hasn't surfaced in, in, in recent memory. I mean, he, the vast majority of Americans out there see politicians, they see government officials, and they don't personally c connect, okay? Right. They see right. those people, the bureaucrats, if you will, the mm -hmm. people in Washington, and there's a, there's a buffer, there's a, there's a distance between, you know, the average American and the people that have been elected. Even if there's been a, a connection while they were running or w w before they were elected, once they get into a position of power, it seems that there's a transition, you know, that now they're one of them and, and everybody right. else is, okay, we're on the outside. Right. So Donald is, is 
is communicating in a way that, hey, he's one of us. He talks like us. He thinks like us. He's not phrasing things carefully. He's talking like he, he's sitting across from the dinner table or he's sitting right. next to us in the bar or well, whatever. Well, what, what's interesting is, is that for the, you know, the anti-establishment um, outsider candidate, uh, he's hired a good team of political experts. And if you, if you listen closely and follow closely uh, his campaign and his rhetoric, um, he's targeting a certain audience, and he's been very shrewd politically. Um, just the other day, for example, he came out uh, and talked about how the 1% needs to pay more taxes, uh, and that he's for the middle class guy. Um, you know, who knows if that's what Donald Trump believes. Uh, you know, Donald Trump, like every other one percenter in this country, can check off a box on his or her tax return at tax time and say, you know what, I don't think I'm paying my fair share, I'll contribute extra. None of them ever do. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's, it's great political theater and it's smart politics uh, to be running as the outsider in the anti-Wall um, Street candidate. And to his credit, Donald Trump so far has been successful as one of the wealthiest Americans um, being able to position himself as an ordinary guy and as uh, anti-Wall Street and anti-Washington, D.C. Uh, that doesn't happen by accident. He has some sharp people advising him. Well, go back to 2008. Um, Barack Obama positioned himself as somebody who was different. He was going to change things. He had hope and change. And he positioned himself as somebody <clears throat> who was an original, who was, you know, not like any of the other right. politicians. And he tapped into a, a, a vast majority of Americans that came out and voted for him that thought he was going to be different right. from any other politician. Right. Um, is this maybe something that, uh, that you know, the Donald is, uh, is looking at and saying, you know what, if he can go in that direction, I can tap into the same feeling just in another direction. Yeah, well, I, th I think what he's doing is he's, you know, there, there's no question there's a, there's a, lot, of, um, a lot of distrust and a lot of unhappiness uh, with, with the federal government in this country. And it's not just among Republicans. Um, the perception is, is Washington's broken and that it doesn't work for uh, the average man or woman, the small business owner, uh, the union uh, worker, uh, that it's just broken and that uh, we need somebody that's gonna come in there and turn the place upside down. Uh, again, that's all well and, and good, but the way this, this government is set up uh, constitutionally is that what you see in Washington, frankly, is what the founding fathers envisioned. They never envisioned one branch of the government running roughshod over the other. Um, this is the kind of debate that needs to take place on the, the great issues of the day. Um, but because we're in a new information age, people are getting frustrated. The perception is, is that nobody can get along, that the, that the system is broken, and that nothing is getting done for America. When in fact, it's working the way it's supposed to work, and uh, uh, the, both sides are debating the great issues of the day. Um, so, <clears throat> Well, w w you know, the Founding Fathers may not have envisioned the bureaucracy quite the way it is today. No, no question. Uh, when we come back, no we'll talk a little bit more about how things are going in Washington and, and maybe uh, what's going to happen if, if the Donald gets further than, you know, than the process that uh, is in sure. works right now. We'll be back uh, right after this.